Yaga bombs, Yaga bombs, Yaga bombs, Yaga bombs. Fucking HGH. Muscle. Do you remember that video at all? New haircut. It's like classic YouTube back in the day. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. It's like it's like this Guido guy going into the gym, and he gets a new haircut, and he tries to get laid, but then not really. <laughs> nah, I don't. I don't remember that. Oh, you should look it up, dude. It's really good. <laughs> it's probably not good now since the quality of YouTube is so much better now. Like six years later, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, YouTube. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> So it's another drunk episode, guys. <laughs> the fuck did you get me into? <laughs> Dude, I'm drinking Jack Daniels and fucking orange juice. That's how much of a slob I am. <laughs> I'm going with uh, a bit of a variation off of last time. Because last time I had the uh, alcoholic root beer float. Yeah. This time I went with uh, alcoholic cream soda float. Ooh. Holy fuck. Fucking god, is this good? Does that make the difference? Uh, to me, yeah. <laughs> also, I'm slamming fucking Jaeger too, so let's fucking do this. <laughs> Damn. Oh god, I fucking hate straight. Because, like, the Jack Daniels and orange juice is not good, like, at all. Like, not a, like, not one iota, not one Rayliota of sliver. <laughs> okay, so. So on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being pure water and 10 being coyote piss. <laughs> you fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, probably like a 6. Well, that's not too bad. Oh, but it, Well, what's 7? Like paint thinner? <laughs> well, I mean, like, since I've drank so much gross shit in my life. It really is not that bad, but I, it's kind of bad, though. So I probably bump it up to seven. <laughs> uh, but what you been doing, man? Oh, uh, fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I lead a sad life. That was so honest. <laughs> Just nothing. <laughs> Let's see what my new ringtone. No, <laughs> I'm working on a thrash remix for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. For the so, re the release of the shitty new one. Yeah, with the <laughs> Iron Man outfits. Oh, it's so bad. Like I saw the fucking preview with the uh, before Logan, and my girlfriend goes like, she goes up to me like, "Why do they like misfits? Why do nobody like each other in this movie?" Because like the whole you seen the trailer? Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so fucking bad <laughs> like uh they just ruined the power rangers because like i fucking actually really like the Power rangers as a kid you know because like i am also rambling way too fucking much i think i caught up to you bro <laughs> <laughs> all right Red. but you know what i mean because i i did I, I did a whole episode about the power rangers trailer on my other podcast that is dead now i think <laughs> i don't know i haven't uploaded in like two months <laughs> so who the fuck knows what's going on over there? <laughs> well, there's always time for new ones. Well, it's that thing that, that um we were talking about before with podcast co-hosts. I don't want to... It feels like I've forced people to do that show, so I don't want to keep doing that. <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, I'll just... Whenever there's something to talk about, I'll upload it, maybe. Wow, it's like Storytelling 101 implemented in a real fucking uh, life. I know. Who right? would have thought? Damn, right? Who the fuck? Who the fuck knows that shit? <laughs> oh man oh by the way what was our prompts for it this week <laughs> uh they were uh bars and and divorce. divorce thank you red rich for another another prompt because you're the man and thanks to uh thomas fireheart for uh his mm -hmm. suggestion yeah 
I invited yeah. him to be on the show, and he was like, I don't know if I can write a story. I was like, you wrote a fucking premise. Just write that story. <laughs> Did he really? Like, he's been on the other show, the Two Pages podcast. You were, you were on every episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, Tom. I have to give you on another another episode because whatever. <laughs> That's this funny. is your one episode warning slash shaming. <laughs> now come be on the show, right. or we'll do it again. <laughs> oh god, damn it! So this story is called The Mysterious Object. We begin our tale on the deserted desert outskirts of Bumdagger. Two halfling wanderers, Dale and Jeff, are recounting stories of their past. I remember this one time I found this lost pedal puff of the king of Bumdagger, Jeff recollects. Jeff was 55 gray hair and had a massive scar on the entire length of his left forearm. Dale was younger, but you you would never tell. Wait, what is that sentence that I just read? (laughs) (laughs) Dale was younger, but you would never tell due to his extreme alcoholism. Where, (laughs) where was the, I don't, I didn't have a voice for him already yet, so how about, um, just my normal voice. Cool. (laughs) Rat. Where was the lost pedal puff? Dale replied. One day, I woke up and I heard scratching at my door. I opened it, there it was. I didn't know it was missing. I almost cooked it up right there. Why didn't you? I don't know, Jeff said with a stern look on his face. Just one of those things, I guess. I got a hefty reward, too. How much? Dale asked intently. A hundred thousand Denny's. What you do with the money? Dale continued. That was the day I left. I hopped on that old wizard train and never looked back. Jeff looked down at the sand as if to re- recollect, re- recollect a painful memory. And I still miss my family. There was deafening silence for three single moments. Then Jeff continued, I still remember it like it was yesterday. I got home from my work early to surprise my wife with this amazing gift. Well, she surprised me instead. I came home and I witnessed my wife being plowed by my neighbor of 15 years. And you know the worst part? Jeff asked, not expecting an answer. His dick was bigger than mine. Filed for the divorce the next day. Ah. <laughs> Dale's mouth hinged agapes as far as it can go. Jeff, you old coot, you're all right. Then they swing their arms around each other in a non-homosexual embrace. The pair kept walking until Dale tripped over something in the sand. What the kumquat shit was that? Dale said, disgruntled in the warm sand. I don't know, but boom howdy, was that a mighty tumble. I wish we had some sort of image device that strings a million pictures together to create a moving sound box so I can watch them one more time. Dale inspects the metal object that made him trip. Yeah, it's called your fucking brain. The object weighed about three pounds and seemed to resemble a face. Hey, Jeff. You seen anything like this before? Dale hands over the artifact because I guess that's his voice now too. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, what the fuck? This is a shit show immediately. Goddamn. Jeff first knocks on it with his back of his hand. Silence. He next places it next to his ear. Dale has a look of disbelief nailed to his face. You know what it is? Jeff's eyes begin to grow as he forms a sentence. No idea, dude, but it's ticking. Bullshit, give it here. Jeff tosses the object and misses Dale completely and gets sucked into the sand below. What'd you do that for? Dale and Jeff began to argue as the sand begins to glow a reddish-orange color. The pair's argument continues and Dale brings up shit that has nothing to do with the current fight. Like, come on, man, there is no point of doing that. (laughs) (laughs) The light glows darker with every wave. Soon, a metal man rises from the sand. The metal object that was once the size of a basketball has now assembled to a seven-foot entity. It was copper in color and had a cylindrical body. Hello, sirs! The metal man sounded British for some reason. Which one of you summon me? He did. Then, <clears throat> wait. <clears throat> he did! They said in, in unison and, of course, pointed at each other. The metal man scratches the metallic head in confusion. Well, okay, young rascallions. Like, thank you so much. I will be on my way now. The metal man b- begins to walk away, whistling a sweet robot tune. 
<sighs> Dill and Jeff jog to catch up with the middleman. Who are you? Jeff says in a huff. Yeah, what the fuck is going on? Where the fuck you come from? Dale inquires. Marty Robo is the name, cards is my game, and I'm off to get hella fucked up at a, and bang some unhinged women at the nearest bar. What's a bar? They said in unison again. Marty Robo then scanned the pair with his robot sensors in his head. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, Tavern, I didn't realize I was in this time. The boys are even more confused. But please tell us why you are here. We found you, then we accidentally threw you over there, and now you are here. Dale continues to babble. Look, son, I don't know. The metal man stops walking and places his right arm on Dale's shoulder. My consciousness was just downloaded five minutes ago, and I'm off to complete my programming. Jeff asks, which is... I'm going to get drunk, high, and bang virus riddled women without a firewall. I'm going to consummate until my member rusts off. Mighty Robo punctuated his statement with a smile and begins to walk on again on his quest. Well, that's that, Jeff concludes. No fucking way, dude. Dale's right eye began to spasm. This is not over. I must know what's up with that fucking thing that literally grew from fucking nothing. What art thou going to do, Dale? <laughs> I have a plan. Dale pulled out a net from the inside of his pants. You grab one end, and we will trap him in this. Dale said with a crazed look in his eye. I don't think that's going to work, man. Just fucking do it! Dale ordered now, frothing from the mouth. The pair of Carly run up on Marty from behind. They stretch out the net. Jeff's lungs begin to breathe deeply, and this sits off Marty's defense program. The metal man's retina of LEDs turn red. His left hand morphs into a saw blade and swings 360 degrees around, chewing through anything in its past. Dell and Jeff drop dead with their heads landing in the hot desert sand. Oh, Marty fuck. Robo, right? Marty Robo continued to complete his quest. The end. You know, I think I like this Marty Robo guy. Hello. This is kind of a robot. British voice, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Hello, Gavna. <laughs> oh, I see, that would have better. Why didn't you write this story? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you never know. Maybe Marty Robo will make uh, an appearance in the future. Yeah, because he's apparently a time traveler. Who the fuck yeah. knew? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't either. <laughs> Good story. <clears throat> Thanks, man. It was terrible. <laughs> the whole thing was just fucking terrible. Yeah, just but I'm damn. drunk, so it was great. Time for round two. Round two of booze or round two of the story? Uh, maybe a bit of both. Ooh. I'm getting a little saucy over here. I'm getting saucy in both ways. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> getting saucy in more than one way. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't come up with a name for this story. Oh, is, is that... Wait, what? I, I I was about to read the name of the story, and I didn't come up with a name for it. Oh, because you said it like you were reading it. <laughs> so I thought that was the title of the story. This story's called, I Didn't Come Up With a Name <laughs> for This Story. I'm so confused. <laughs> It'll all make sense soon enough. Cool. <laughs> There's a bar called The Edge of Tomorrow. That's known far and wide across the universe. Few have visited there, and even fewer have lived to tell the tale. Due to this, I'm going to have to tell the tale of someone who can no longer speak. His name was Barley, and he traveled across the universe as a professional alcohol taster. He'd tried it all, from Snailian Ale to Chillville Vodka, and everything in between. Well, almost everything, which is why he was taking a trip to the Edge of Tomorrow. They had developed a new, secret drink, and Barley had to try it so he could fill up his alcoholic bingo card. 
<laughs> Which is every bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> a Barley had to duck to enter the bar, as he was a pretty tall guy at eight foot one. His size made it easy for him to drink in large quantities without getting completely smashed, but that wouldn't help him today. Hey, big man, the bartender said in an <laughs> odd, undecipherable accent. What can I get ya? Was he Spanish? Was he French? Was he hit in the face with a board? No one knows. I'm looking for the house special, Barley replied. As the bar went silent, and everyone made that gasping sound all at once. Are you sure about that, lad? Barley looked at the bartender, slightly bemused. Well, it was the entire point of me coming here. I mean, this place is really out of the way. The bartender's smile grew <laughs> wide, like he knew he was about to do something he probably shouldn't. Like that time I burned a chair in a McDonald's parking lot because my bosses said I could but didn't <laughs> think I would. True story. <laughs> <laughs> I can literally see you do that. That's what's funny about it. I can just picture it in my mind, be like, boop. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they were doing renovations, and I was like, are you guys keeping this chair? No? What are you doing with it? Oh, probably throwing it out. Can I burn it? Yeah, go ahead. So I did, and it was awesome. That was that probably awesome. the best day at work ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I like doing the show with you, Troy. Every episode, I learn a little bit more nuggets <laughs> about you. <laughs> All right, but don't say I didn't warn you. The bartender got Barley to sign a waiver, saying neither he nor the bar were responsible for whatever happens. Emergency lights began to flash red and a siren began to go off to the tune of Darude's sandstorm. Confetti <laughs> fell out... <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> that song is fucking the balls, dude. Uh, confetti fell out of the ceiling, and one guy got kind of angry when bits of confetti fell in his drink while he was off in the bathroom. He asked for another drink, but the bartender told him to, to just pick them out. In his anger, he said fuck you to the bartender, down the rest of his drink without picking out the confetti, threw the glass on the floor, and choked to death on the confetti. The, <laughs> the bouncer threw him out the door, and his body flew aimlessly in space. Uh, the bartender reached below the bar and grabbed a shot glass, filling it with water. Then he put on a face mask and a pair of rubber gloves, then reached down and put a small container on the table. The container was made of glass and had a metallic bottom, with metallic strips winding up to the top. The top was also made of metal and easily screwed off. A barley could now see the liquid without obstruction, and it was as terrifying as it was intriguing. It was the darkest color possible, blacker than the blackest black times infinity with swirls yeah. of smoky grayish purple. Uh, the bartender got out an eyedropper and put it into the container, drawing out a small amount of the liquid. He put a single drop into the shot glass of water, immediately turning the water black. He put a slice of lime on the rim and one of those cute little drink umbrellas into it. Is there an actual point to those things other than just looking cool? Like, are there people out there who are thinking, like, Hey there, little drink. It's a hot one out there today. You're gonna need an umbrella to protect you from the sun's rays. You want a pink one or a green one? Well, oh, yeah, that looks good on you. That'll keep those ice cubes nice and cold. <laughs> oh, man. And he served it on a coaster of sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> and the napkins were just a beach towel <laughs> yeah. Barley held the shot glass between his thumb and first two fingers 
mentally preparing himself for what he was about to do. It was time to drink some divorce a -hall. A drink so strong it made you legally divorced. What? <laughs> that is the most powerful thing in the world. <laughs> yep, it's fucking intense. <laughs> He started humming the theme, uh, the movie theme from Mortal Kombat, bobbing his head to the beat and repeating the test your might line in his head. When he got to the point where the dude screams, <laughs> Mortal Kombat, he downed the drink and things immediately went bad. Well, sort of, I guess. I, I mean, have you ever had a time where you were drunk and had to throw up and it, and it wasn't that bad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Barley was, was hallucinating like crazy, and imagined he was in a beautiful orchard filled with cupcake trees and diamond berry bushes. The stream of vomit projecting out of his mouth was a beautiful rainbow, complete with a pot of gold at the other end, <laughs> and a lazy little nep uh lazy little leprechaun named Tootso Farton. <laughs> <laughs> Toots jumped up, grabbed the pot of gold, and started to fly away. You'll never get me gold, Toots <laughs> shouted, and Barley began to give chase. As he was running, he felt like vines were chasing after him, trying to ensnare him. Unfortunately for Barley, both the leprechaun and the vines were faster than he was. One of the vines got him around the leg, and he fell over. Vines then began to wrap around his arms and legs. They raised him in the air, and in one fluid motion, threw him right out of the meadow. Feeling like he was flying, he put his arms out and began flapping. He felt like he broke through the limitations of his own consciousness, hearing the shards shatter all around him before blacking out. Back inside the bar, the bartender was still clutching the container of divorce hall, standing beside the octopus bouncer who threw Barley through a window and into his spaceship. They began to clean the vomit off the walls, and the bartender called the glass repair shop to see how quickly he could get his window replaced. The end. <laughs> nice. Dude, divorce hall, what the fuck? It isn't made from concentrated bitch. Uh, it could very well be. I mean, it like, it sounds evil. <laughs> but, like, you know, like, fun. the evil that you kind of want to get with, like a nasty bitch. <laughs> so, the answer is probably. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> also, I noticed that you started making up shit, too. Like, diamond berries? Nice. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Fuck They're yeah. delicious. <laughs> well, you can actually eat them. They're not just like diamonds. Well, I mean, they're uh, <laughs> you gotta have good teeth. Oh, okay, cool. So, like a human probably can't can consume no. them. Oh no, you'd uh, probably have to be like a rock golem or something like that. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> rock <Come> monster. <laughs> So we just want to talk about 90s music <laughs> since last time we talked about Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, well, one thing right quick. I, I uh, fucking beat Pokemon Rumble World today, so I'm going nice. back to Sun and Moon tomorrow. Dude, I just beat Moon the other day. Oh, right on. Yeah, it's it's not as cool. Like, <laughs> I might cut this out, but I beat the game and I wanted to go to bed because it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. So I was like, cool, I'll just beat the game and go to bed. No, <laughs> you can't just do that. You have to fucking fight the fucking goddamn Ultra Beast. Like, the the main one, the tapu with the fuck, the main one that you, that you see in the story. You have to beat that. And then, you have to go through fucking, like, 15 minutes of dialogue of just straight tapping A. So, if I, if I would have read that, it would took, like, 40 minutes. <laughs> like, fuck. Dude. Back to my thing point of episode two. Too much goddamn talking in that fucking game. <laughs> you could just, like, Put it into sleep mode and go to bed. No. I wanted to turn it off. <laughs> okay. Because it was like almost dead, so I didn't want to charge it, but I guess, yeah. I could have done it. Could have done that. 
but I didn't. <laughs> so 90s music. Yeah, dude. What's going on? <laughs> uh, we, before the show, we are talking about that song because I was playing it. Um, it's so fucking good. What's going on by Four Non Blondes? Also, I believe it's a cover. Although I'm not entirely sure on that, but I think it's a cover. I'm not sure. I know the He-Man version's a cover. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that that one's good. That was, it's really not good. It's one of those shitty YouTube videos that you have to watch, like to be a man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Just like that one and fucking um, unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one though, at least, right? Mm-hmm. That one's so good. I I I was describing it because to my girlfriend because she never really watched YouTube like back in the day. So I was describing to her. She, I was like, "It's a black guy in the woods talking about his girlfriend, and then not really at the same time." <laughs> she was like, "Why is that funny?" You just have to watch it. <laughs> Goddamn. Oh, but yeah, Chinese music, man. What what were you into? Because we were little babies. At least I was a little baby. Yeah, I was. Uh, it was my formative years. So yeah. Um. So I was like, uh, let's see. Fuck, I'm terrible at math. Um, I I got into music around like ninety five, ninety six ish. Oh, um, like really? Like hardcore. Uh, well, I got into, like, Smashing Pumpkins, uh, first and foremost. Nice. Um, and then just all kinds of bands, like, you know, like, the post-grunge kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, cause, like, grunge bands, I don't know, like, it's, uh, it's kind of weird, you know, looking back at it now, cause, like, when I was in that age, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, fucking Generation X and all that shit, <laughs> but, like... I was fucking, like, 12 years old, you know? Like, I wasn't anything. Um, but, I mean, you know, like, back then I kind of felt like I, you know, associated with grunge music, and now listening back to it, it's all so depressing. Yeah. And it's kind of weird, just because, like, you know, the, the stuff after Nirvana, um, you know, like, there was a definite stylistic shift, where, yeah. um... It got more poppy with, like, Bush and shit. <clears throat> yeah, and Bush and Silverchair and, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I like that, because, you know, it was, like, grunge light kind of mixed yeah. with, like, the, the jangle pop kind of sound from the 60s. I know, dude, I fucking love that shit. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the sort of stuff that I was into, like Bush and, um, like all kinds of Canadian bands, like Econoline Crush and Matthew Good Band and Moist and... Moist? Kinds... Yeah, Moist. There's a band they're called a... Moist? Yeah, they're fucking awesome. Dude, that's like one of the most hated words of all time. <laughs> Did you listen to Suck Puppy? Uh, nope. I got, I didn't really get into them, but I think... Dan from Gamers talked about it, so I had to look it up. And I have one of those CDs from a fucking garage sale because it was like 25 cents. I was like, fuck, I'll get some sick puppy. I played it. It's fucking so 90s. It's insane. Because it's, like, it's at that later edge of the 90s where like where they knew what the 90s was. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, like here's Nirvana. Here's fucking Alice in Chains. And it, this is like, I don't know what the fuck 90s is right now because it's fucking 92. <laughs> you know? It well, was like, like the oh, 90s were... Later. It's so weird to talk to people about, you know, just 90s music in general. Because, yeah. uh, like, as someone who's actually, you know, like, looked kind of really delved deep into it, and, you know, th there's a lot of it that is just fucking weird. Um, yeah, but like Because, you know, like, stuff. you get the, uh, like, the, the tail end of the 80s stuff, you know, before mm -hmm. grunge hits. And grunge was only big for, like, two and a half years. Yep. Um, and then you had, you know, like, the, the post-grunge alternative stuff, like we were talking about. And then that gave way to, like, a, a really short-lived swing trend. I do remember that. I was, yeah. like, fucking... Fucking, like, Brian Setzer Orchestra and shit. 
I remember that because, like, I remember having it playing on, like, a top 40s radio or some shit like, with my mom. I'm like, what is this? She was like, this is swing music. <laughs> she was confused, too. She was like, why is this playing on the radio now? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Because that was, like, super short. I remember that, actually. That's fucking crazy. But, like, with your experiences with Nirvana and shit, is really completely different than mine because I was born in 1990. So, in my formative years is, like, early 2000s when I was, like, a teenager and shit. Uh, like, 12 and, like, up. <clears throat> but, like, so, I was a little kid, and I was, I was fucking deprived as fuck. My fucking grandparents and parents were like, you can't listen to but nothing but Radio Disney. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what, that's, so, that's when I got into fucking, you know, it's like Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys and all that shit, because that's what they played on Radio Disney. But then once I broke out of that, that's when I was like, oh my god, there's so much music out there. And fucking, that's when I was like, oh my god, Nirvana is so fucking good. And now I'm like, eh, they're okay. I mean, they're a fucking really great band. They're really influ- influ- influential. And I love Kurt Cobain. His fucking lyrics are so fucking amazing. But like, I have, with you talking about, um, like going back and you feel weird about it, because like this, I don't relate to this anymore. I had the same fucking thing with Linkin Park. <laughs> because like I rem- I remember like remembering like the fucking all their fucking teen angst songs like yeah this is fucking me man fucking <laughs> like I'm about to break <laughs> you know all that shit um I, l- I listen to it back now I'm like wow the lyrics are fucking terrible they're just basic as fuck lyrics just to make you fucking be like yeah yeah that's me man <laughs> yeah the uh like the and that was the tail end of the fucking 90s, too, was, yeah. like, the uh, the new metal kind of stuff that came in. Yeah. Um, and that was just the worst. Like, the, <laughs> the absolute worst point in musical history ever. Ever? You actually call that out? Ever? Yeah. When every single person in the band wants to be the drummer, including the singer, <laughs> that, like, that's fucking new metal. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of true. Everybody just also, wants to go. Like, okay, you're the guitarist. Play some fucking like solos and shit. <laughs> oh, we don't play solos because we have our fucking guitars at our knees. <laughs> no, I. New metal is like the worst. Like the absolute worst. Do you like System of the Down though? I love System of a Down. See, everybody has that thing. They're like, I fucking hate new metal, but System of a Down, though, they're fucking great. Because they're actual fucking composers, man. They're fucking amazing yeah. guitarists. Fucking the drummer, like, should not be that good in that band. He's fucking just doing shit, fucking everything, flying around. And, like, it, just sound, it doesn't sound like he's trying too hard. It's just, like, I don't know, he, he, his fills are so fucking good. I love it so much. <laughs> Like, I listen to Sister now, and I just listen to the drummer sometimes. I just focus in on the drummer. Because I'm like, fuck, dude. He fucking kills that snare so hard. <laughs> but let's listen. Let's talk about TLC. Because I fucking love TLC. <laughs> so, yeah, at the, uh, when we started, uh, this conversation, like we said, yeah. we were talking about, like, Four Non Blondes and TLC. And you'd mentioned that, like, either the Four Non Blondes or uh, TLC was the most 90s video ever. Mm-hmm. And you said Waterfalls. Oh, yeah. I thought Creep. See, I don't yeah. remember Creep. That's the thing. It's, I don't, I don't know. To me, it's the epitome of early 90s. It's all mm-hmm. just really soft colors, and all the uh, all the girls are just in like pajamas. <laughs> oh yeah, like I silk that. pajamas. It's I don't know. Like there's not really anything going on in the song or like in the video or anything. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. To me, that that's very nineties. Yeah, because I mean, I have a theory of a, a fan theory about the nineties and how to make a nineties music video. All you need to do is do close-ups of random things and make, a, like, some frames blue. That is it. <laughs> and then sometimes show the fucking band. Because, like, every single Stone Temple Pilot song music video is like that. <laughs> every single one. <laughs> and fucking Nirvana, all fucking, uh, what, what the fuck one was it? Oh, God, I don't remember. But, like, the whole background is just blue. And then they're, they're like, saturated as fuck in the foreground. And then they cut to fucking, like, weird shit. 
in between. Oh, come remember. as you are. Yes. <laughs> nice. See, that's 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 a good impact of like exactly what I'm talking about because you just describing that you knew exactly what the fuck music video was because it's so iconic. <laughs> well, that's really iconic, because though. like I was obsessed with music videos during that time. Like I mm. I still have like a whole collection of VHS tapes of just music vi- well music videos and Simpsons clips. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's fucking that's so 90s. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Cuz I I remember fucking you, you doing the VHS shit because that that was that's just how you got your media sometimes because it wasn't on 24/7. You couldn't just click on a fucking video. <laughs> yeah, we're living in a fucking dream age. We're living in the future, man. <laughs> <laughs> but like I don't know because I mean do you still you still have so you still have a VHS player and all that shit then yeah nice because I had to buy mine again from the fucking garage sale and I was like yeah let's fucking buy all the VHSs that we can find that we thought are good and then I try to watch them and they're all they're all fucking ruined because Goodwill doesn't give a fuck about their quality yeah <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I tried to pop in Mary Poppins, the whole thing's black, except if there's audio, it's like, oh, sweet, I just listened to Mary Poppins. Fuck you. Oh, it's a musical, so... <laughs> that's if, half the battle. <laughs> oh, man. Do you want to wrap this up? Wrap yeah, this up like it's uh, probably about time. <clears throat> so, everybody, thank you for coming in and just jizzing on this episode with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I just realized we never said our name once in this fucking intro. <laughs> we just went through the episode. Fuck it. If Chelsea and Tavern can do it, we can too. <laughs> you know who we are by fucking episode nine. Yeah. But there's also that rule of every ep- every episode is it somebody's first episode. Go and listen to the rest to hear who we are. <laughs> cool. So thank you everybody for listening to this episode. Um, we have a fucking wiki now, guys. Like, holy shit. I spent like eight hours trying to make that fucking thing. <laughs> I spent some time on it, too. Yeah. A little fucking bit. Fucking awesome. It's pretty fucking sweet. Um, yeah, we, it's a wiki <laughs> where you can see all of our characters. <laughs> I don't know why they call you Lord. Uh, yeah, you can see all her, all my characters and descriptions <laughs> and names and see all the stupidity in text form. So that's cool. Um, if, but if you want to support the show, please give us an iTunes review for five stars. That would be cool. But you can honestly give it whatever you want. Or just send yeah. us money. <laughs> yeah, by going to bigcartel.com. Slash CND podcast. Scratch that, reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> we, you get a fucking sweet ass button of our iTunes logo, which is cyborgs and dragons t- t- together. <laughs> <laughs> together again for the first time. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we can do that, or just follow us at cnd underscore podcast on Twitter. Facebook is cnd podcast, no underscore, and give us a prompt on any social media that you want. That is either Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, because we don't have any other ones. Speaking <laughs> of prompts, on... what are prompts for next time? Uh, we got motherfucking dungeons and and uh, minotaurs. <laughs> minotaurs. Yeah. And uh mm-hmm. why why did we pick dungeons? Uh Well, it, <laughs> if it doesn't happen, maybe Oh yeah, it, maybe we so. shouldn't spoil the surprise. <laughs> yeah, cuz I don't want to Just c- cut like, that part it. out. <laughs> yeah, I will. Cuz I don't want to say it and then be like, "Oh yeah, we can't do it anymore." Like, "All right, cool." <laughs> this um... was your one warning. <laughs> <laughs> Well, come we'll shame to them into being the on the show. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I don't know if you know this, but our show is the Danger Zone, <laughs> not, <laughs> not Cyborgs and Dragons. It's just the Danger Zone. <laughs> is that is that is that seriously like a podcast? I'm gonna look it up right now. If that's not a podcast, me and you are making it. <laughs> but what, what would what would it be about the Danger Zone podcast? Just that one scene. Over and over every episode from fucking Top Gun. <laughs> yeah, w- one episode it'll be about the cinematography. The next one it'll be about the audio. The we'll find something new every single time. Ah, oh, did is is it? Taken? I'm so disappointed. I just looked it up. Danger Zone podcast. It's a fucking football podcast. Ah, oh. what what the? I'm gonna email the email them with an angry letter. And be like fuck are you doing may at least talk about fucking tom cruise's pecs once <laughs> god damn <laughs> <laughs> oh man <clears throat> so next time we're going to talk about dungeons and minotaurs and this is the end of the episode <laughs> thanks for listening everybody until next yep. time keep on sandstorming <laughs> we need to do video one of these times. <laughs>